Section 1. You will hear a verbal conversation between two people inquiring about renting a venue. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 6. Hello? Oh, hello. I needed to find out about hiring a room in the Village Hall for the evening of September the 1st. Sure, just bear with me. Yes, we have both rooms available that evening. There's our official main hall, that's got seating for 200 people, or there's the Charlton Room. Sorry? The Charlton Room. C-H-A-R-L-T-O-N. That's got seating for up to 100. Well, we're organising a dinner to raise money for a charity, and we're hoping for 100 or at least 150 people, so I think we will go for the main hall. How much would that cost? Let's see. You wanted it for the evening of September 1st? Yes, that's a Saturday. So from 6pm to midnight, that would be £115. That's the weekend price. It's £75 on weekdays. That's all right. And I have to tell you, there's also a deposit of £250, which is returnable, of course, as long as there's no damage. But we do insist that this is paid in cash. We don't take cards for that. So it can be paid however you like, though. Cash, credit card, cheque. Oh, well, I suppose that's OK. Uh, does this charge include the use of tables and chairs and so on? Oh, yes. And what about parking? Yeah, that's all included. The only thing that isn't included is... You said you were organising a dinner? Yes. Well, you'll have to pay extra for the kitchen if you want to use that. It's £25. The facilities are good quality cookers and fridges and so on. OK. Well, I suppose that's all right. We will cover the cost in our entry charges. Right. So I'll make a note of that. Now, there are just one or two things you need to think about before the event. For example, you'll have to see about getting a licence if you're planning to have any music during the meal. Oh, really? It's quite straightforward. I'll give you the details later on. And in about a week or ten days before your event, you'll need to contact the caretaker, that's Mr Evans, to make the arrangements for entry. He'll sort that out with you. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 7 to 10. Questions 7 to 10. Do I give him the payment as well? No, you do that directly with me. Right. Now, is there anything I need to know about what happens during the event? I think, as you are aware, of course, there is no smoking throughout the building. Of course. Now, are you having a band? Yes. Then they'll definitely have a lot of equipment. So rather than using the front door, they should park their van around the back and use the stage door there. You can open that from the inside, but don't forget to lock it at the end. OK. Also, talking of bands, I'm sure I don't need to tell you this, but you must make sure that no one fiddles about with the black box by the fire door. That's a system that cuts in when the volume reaches a certain level. It's a legal requirement. Sure. We want people to be able to talk to one another, so we don't want anything too loud. Oh, that reminds me. We'll be having speeches. Are there any microphones available? Yeah, just let the caretaker know. He'll get those for you. Right, now, when the event is over, we do ask that the premises are left in good condition. So there's a locked cupboard, and you'll be informed of the code you need to open that. It's got all the cleaning equipment, brushes and detergent and so on. Right. So what do we need to do after everyone's gone? Sweep the floors, I suppose? To be honest, they have to be washed, not just swept. Then you'll be provided with black plastic bags, so all the rubbish must be collected and left outside the door. Of course. We'll make sure everything is left tidy. Oh, and I forgot to ask, I presume we can have decorations in the room? You can, but must take them down afterwards. Sure. And the chairs and tables should be stacked up neatly at the back of the room. 
I'll make sure I've got a few people to help me. That is the end of section one. Now you have half a minute to check your answers. Thank you. First, I'll quickly give you some background information. Then I'll be asking you for your remarks on improvements in the town. All things considered, and you don't need me to mention this, Stratford has changed a lot over the last 40 years. These are some of the fundamental changes. 40 years ago, transport connected, for all intents and purposes, all aspects of the town and the neighbouring towns and villages. A great number of people utilised them frequently, but not presently, in light of the fact that transport organisations focus simply on the ways that draw in many travellers. So, parts of the town are no longer served by public transport. In any event, replacing old, uncomfortable transport with brilliant new ones has had little effect on traveller numbers. It's occasionally said that transport charges are excessively high, yet, according to average livelihoods, admissions are not much higher than they were 40 years back. Changes in the street arrangements are influencing the town. Lately, traffic has been forbidden from entering the centre of the town on a preliminary basis, making it a lot more secure for people on foot. The effect of this is being estimated. The new cycle paths, isolating bicycles from vehicles in most primary streets, are being utilised unmistakably more than usual, diminishing traffic and improving air quality. Also, in spite of the fact that the committee's endeavours to have a bypass failed, we haven't surrendered any expectation of convincing the administration to adjust its perspective. Shopping in the town community has changed throughout the years. Many of us can recall when the town was packed with people going out to shop. Numbers have been falling for quite a while, regardless of endeavours to pull in customers, for example by opening new vehicle lanes. Some people combine shopping with visits to the town cafes and restaurants. Most shops are little free stores, which is acceptable, yet many people prefer to utilize supermarkets and department stores in nearby large towns, as there are not many notable chain stores here. Regarding medical facilities, the town is served by family specialists in a few clinical practices. Less than 40 years back, however, each catered to far more patients. The hospital closed 10 years ago, which means journeys to other towns are unavoidable. However, there are more dentists than there used to be. Employment patterns have changed alongside almost everything else. The number of schools and universities have expanded, making that the main employment sector. Services such as web composition and accountancy have developed in significance and, shockingly maybe, manufacturing hasn't seen the decrease that has occurred in different places of the nation. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. Now I'll quickly outline current plans for a portion of the town's facilities before requesting your comments. As you know, if you consistently utilize the car park at the railway station, it's normally full. The railroad organization applied for permission to replace it with the multi-story car park. However, that was refused. Instead, the organization has bought some adjoining land and this will be utilized to increase the number of parking spaces. The Grand, the old cinema on the high road, will close down at the end of the year and reopen on another site. You've probably seen the building under development. The arrangement is to have three cinemas with fewer seats rather than just one large auditorium in the old cinema. I suppose a significant number of you shop in the indoor market. It's become increasingly more pitiful looking and there are fears about security as it has become very run down. The good news is that it will close for about a month and a half to be made safe and redesigned and the improved structure will open in July. Lots of individuals use the library, including the school. Undergraduate students go there to study. 
the council has managed to secure funding to keep the library open later into the evening, two times per week. We would like to enlarge the building in the not too distant future. However, this is by no means definite. There's no restriction on access to the nature reserve on the edge of town, and this will continue to be the case. What will change, however, is that the council will never again be in charge of the area. Instead, it will end up being the responsibility of a national body that manages most nature reserves in the country. That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section three. You will hear a conversation between two people about a student survey. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 30. Now listen carefully and answer the questions 21 to 30. OK, Paul, so I finally managed to read the article you mentioned, the one about the survey on students' interest in physics. About the survey of college students done by John William and his group, I was intrigued that the specialists were really a blend of psychologists and physicists. That is an unusual combination. You better believe it. I got somewhat confused from the outset about the students that the survey depended on. They weren't really studying physics. They were studying what's known as the STEM disciplines. That is science, technology, engineering and... What's more, math. However, they were all doing physics courses as a major aspect of their studies. That's right. So, as I got it, John Williams and co. started on how women are underrepresented in physics courses at school, and furthermore that overall, the females who do select these courses have a lower performance level than the men. Nobody truly knows why this is the case. But what the researchers wanted to find out was basically what they could do about the relatively low level of the women's results. But in order to find a solution, they needed to find out more about the nature of the problem. Right. Presently, how about we check whether I can recollect? Um, in the physics class, the female students thought the male students all assumed that ladies weren't any good at physics. Was that it? Also, they felt that the men anticipated that they should get poor outcomes in their tests. That is what the women thought, and that made them anxious. So, they did get poor results. But actually, they were wrong. Nobody was making any assumptions about female students at all. By the way, what John Williams' team did was very simple. Getting the students to do some writing before they went into the physics class. What did they call it? Values. Affirmation. They had to write an essay focusing on things that were significant to them, not particularly to do with the subject they were studying, but more general things like music or people who mattered to them. Right. Thus, the idea of doing the writing is that it gets the students thinking in a positive way. And putting those thoughts into words can relax them and help them overcome the psychological factors that lead to poor performance. But what the researchers in the study had not expected was this one activity raised the women's physics grades from C to the B range. A huge change. Pity it wasn't to an A, but still. No, it does suggest that the women were seriously underperforming beforehand in comparison with the men. Yes. Mind you, John Williams's article left out a lot of details, such as did the students do the writing just once or several times? And had they been told why they were writing? That might have affected the results. You mean if they know the researchers thought it might help them to improve, then they'd just try to fulfil that expectation? Exactly. So anyway, I thought for our project we could do a comparative report and examine whether it truly was the composition exercise that led to that outcome. All right, so we could ask them to do a writing task about something completely different like a general knowledge topic. Perhaps. Or on the other hand, we could have a large portion of the students doing a writing task and half accomplishing something different, similar to an oral assignment. Or even half do a similar composition task, as in the original research, and half do a factual writing task. 
At that point, we'd check whether it truly is the subject that had the effect or something different. That's it. Great. So, at our meeting with the supervisor on Monday, we can tell him we've chosen our undertaking. We ought to have our points prepared by that point. I guess we have to peruse the first investigation. The article's only a summary. What's more, there was another article I read by Smolinski. It was about her examination on how women and men act in blended groups in class. She contrasted them with single-sex groups and alone. Let me guess. The ladies were better at collaboration. That is the thing I expected. However, the men and the women got similar outcomes, whether they were working in groups or all alone. In any case, I suppose it isn't so pertinent to us. What stresses me out, at any rate, is whether we will complete everything in time. We'll be all right now if we understand what we're doing, in spite of the fact that I'm not satisfied about how we will survey whether the students in our analysis really gained any ground or not. Exactly. We may require some guidance on that. The primary concern is to ensure we have the correct size example, not very large or small. That shouldn't be difficult. Right. What do we have to do straight away? We could view the timetable for the science classes, or we should just make an appointment to see one of the science professors. That'd be better. Great. What's more, we could even get to observe one of the classes. What for? Well, okay. Maybe let's just go with your idea. That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section four. Section four. You will hear a lecture on construction and design of a museum. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. We have been examining the variables the architect needs to consider when planning local buildings. I'm going to proceed onward presently to think about the plan of open buildings, and I'll represent this by referring to the new museum construction that is of late being finished here in the city. Therefore, likewise with a local building, when planning an open structure, a planner needs to think about the capacity of the structure. For instance, is it to be utilized principally for amusement, or then again for instruction, or for organization? The second thing he needs to consider is the setting of the building. This includes its physical location, clearly, yet in addition includes the social meaning of the structure, how it identifies with the individuals it's built for. Lastly, for significant open structures, the modeler may likewise be searching for a focal, emblematic thought on which to base the structure, a kind of uh, analogy for the structure and the manner by which it is used. We should take a look at the new museum corresponding to these ideas. The areas picked were actually sites in a rundown district that has been ignored in past redevelopment plans. It was occupied by a manufacturing plant that had been empty for some years. The entire territory was a good way from the skyscraper office squares of the focal business area and strip mall be that as it may, it was just a single kilometer from the Ring Street. The site itself was bordered to the north by a canal which had once been utilized by boats getting raw materials when the area was used for manufacturing. The designer chosen for the project was Tom Harrison. He found the fundamental plan challenge was the area of the site in a territory that had no neighboring structures of any significance. The noteworthiness of the building in this area was up until now obscure. However, he chose to make a structure revolving around the possibility of a puzzle, something whose importance, despite everything, must be found. So, how was this reflected in the design of the building? All things considered, Harrison chose to make passerby access to the structure and to use the nearness of the water on the site. As people approached the entrance, they therefore have to cross over a bridge. He wanted to give individuals a feeling of suspense as they see the building first from a distance, and then close up. 
And then the initial impression he wanted to come up with the shape of the building as a whole was that like a box. The primary side that individuals see, the southern divider, is only a high-level divider. This may seem off-putting, however, it underpins Harrison's idea of the structure, that the individual drawing closer is fascinated and considers what will be inside. And this flat wall also has another purpose. At night time, projectors are used and it functions as a huge screen onto which images are projected. The main hall itself seats 1,500 people. The floor is supported by 10 massive pads. These are constructed from rubber and so are able to absorb any vibrations from outside and prevent them from affecting the main hall. The walls are made of a few layers of nectar shaded wood, all sourced from local beech trees. So as to improve the acoustic properties of the theater and to enhance the sound, they are not straight, yet they are not curved. The acoustics are adjustable according to the size of symphony and the kind of music being played. To accomplish this, there are nine versatile boards in the roof above the symphony, which are for the most part separately mechanized, and the walls also have curtains, which can be opened or closed to change the acoustics. The reaction of the public to the new building has been positive. However, the evaluation of some critics has been less than enthusiastic. In spite Harrison's efforts to use local materials, they criticize the style of the design as being international rather than local, and say it doesn't reflect features of nature or the society for which it is built. That is the end of the listening test. You now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet.